Justin Hawkins writes again, again. Good day to you. It is I, Justin Hawkins. This is my YouTube channel, Justin Hawkins Rides Again. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and um, hit the bell for those notifications. Then you won't miss anything. Um, so I'm going to talk about Jack White today. I love Jack White, first of all. It's going to be difficult for me to do anything that's impartial because I just think he's great. Um, I really appreciate the things that he's done for music. Let's put it that way. Um, we went to visit his... Uh, the, is it the third man? The third man. A record plant in Detroit last time we were in the Americas and it was just a brilliant experience I, I thought it was a it was a bricks and mortar establishment celebrating and uh, you know some a diverse range of, of different musical styles and giving a voice and a platform to lesser known musicians and just and also doing vinyl um, I thought or everything in there was just really impressive I loved it so he's cool I think he's really cool met him once actually um, at the MTV Awards in 2003, I think, or, f yeah, three? Don't know, he was lovely. Lovely man, nice one. Hi, Jack, how you doing? You alright? And he's going to be releasing two albums this year. Count them, two! Incredible, it's like, that's the kind of prolific uh, releasery that you used to see in the 70s, but not so much anymore, it's amazing. He's won 12 Grammy Awards, so that's a lot. Obviously, um, all three of his solo albums have reached number one on the Billboard charts. Brilliant. Rolling Stone ranked him number 70 on the 2010 list of the 100 greatest guitarists of all time. Amazing. All right, well, there's a lot of love for Jack White. He's, he is awesome. Um, let's have a look at this um, song. This song is called uh, Fear of the Dawn. I think this is the uh, official video. It's been out for a couple of weeks already. Let's just check it out. Okay. Yeah, that's the riff. Look like it's kind of like a swingy. It's kind of like old school. It could, I mean, that's the sort of riff that could sound like heavy metal if you went. But it's not. It's more sort of. Um, well, it kicks off with just like a really distorted bass, but it already sounds a bit swingy. Not it's more like a can you hear the subtle difference I'm not sure if I can let's check it okay so that will say but does it and in the video there's 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 sort of the members of his band are all sort of condensed. Um, and it looks like there's a bass player, there's him with his guitar, a drummer, and, and then a man wearing a, a mask who's playing a theremin. Do you guys know what a theremin is? Right, let's get some facts up about theremins. I love the theremin. It's a great instrument. So look at the history of the theremin. Theremin was a product of Soviet government-sponsored um, research into proximity sensors. The, the instrument was invented in October 1919 by the, the Russian physicist Lev Sergeyevich uh, Terman, known in the West as Leon Theremin. So yeah, it's a Russian thing. But this, um, if you listen to the riff, that sort of combination of a, of a swing and a, and a theremin, it's not, not obviously not the same line, but it could be... That's what theremins sound like. That sort of could be really expressive like that. I think one hand is used to operate the pitch, and the other hand is used to. Um, oh, I must be. The, I don't know which way around it goes. Yeah, I think the pitch is. The volume is one hand, and then the pitch is another. But it makes that sort of. I think another famous application for it was uh, um, good vibrations. <laughs> But that, that would that would have been a vibe, uh, theremin as opposed to a human voice. Um, but the one I'm thinking of is, is um, Doctor Who, you know, because that's that's got the. Doom, the poof, the doom, the poof, the doom. Ah, 
but I think the Doctor Who is. Something like that. So yeah, it's already reminded me of classic uh, British science fiction. <laughs> but they, they're using the theremin uh, as more of an effect, you know, like a sound effect, as opposed to sort of doing those um, those melodies that you expect from it. But then I get. It's really intense. This song. It seems like it's. Um, it's only two and a half, or well, two minutes, two minutes and ten seconds. Uh, we're up to just before the first the end of the first minute and it hasn't got anywhere near a chorus yet so I'm wondering if it even bothers with a chorus I love songs that don't actually so that seems to be the chorus like a like a passing goes to an E high E and then back in but with a solo over the doom the doom the doom the diddly doom It always makes me laugh when people talk about Jack White because he's a great guitar player. He's an awesome guitar player, but you can't describe his, you can't describe his sound as as um, clean or stripped stripped down or anything. There's loads of stuff going on with it because a lot of the time he's part of a two piece band providing all of the harmonic information using only his voice and his guitar, and he uses effects. You know, sometimes you can hear things on there that are like. Um, does an octave up or an octave down it's always saturated it's got stuff it's got stuff going on there people who don't know what they're talking about go oh that's a really raw guitar sound but they're fucking morons <laughs> not morons sorry I'm, are we allowed to say morons but yeah anybody who's anybody who says that jack white's guitar sound is clean and raw uh, they're talking out of their anuses um there's a lot going on with it uh more power to him. I love. I think he's got a really distinctive tone. A lot of that comes from his fingers, and a lot of it comes from the effects uh, chain that he's assembled over the years, and it's probably evolving all the time. But you've got to love him. So yeah, he's managed to get like a, a twenty-second guitar solo into a song that's only two minutes long, and hasn't got a chorus. Some really good multi-track guitar stuff going on, like stuff that reinforces the the main one coming in, and it's pretty loud. You know, there's nothing subtle about it. It's really in your face. Um, I love the production on this. It's it's really intense. Ah, oh, yeah, there's a riff. It's brilliant. That's just. It's blues playing, isn't it? It's a, Jack White's a bluesman, obviously. He's like a, a <laughs> with that combination of that sort of blues licory and the you know early British science fiction soundtrack uh, accompaniment. Uh, I don't know. He's created something new. What is this? Sci-fi blues? Is this early British science fiction blues? <laughs> Yeah, and then you can hear the tape slowing down at the end. Or would it be speeding up? I don't know how they do those things. It's clever stuff. But anyway, Jack White's back, and it sounds awesome. This will be one of many things that I'll probably have to cover over the next uh, year, because he's doing two albums. They said it couldn't be done. When we come to America soon, I'm gonna, I'd am gonna. i like to visit the Third Man record plant again. It was really interesting. If you get a chance, go go down and check it out for yourself as well. Anyway, lots of love to you. Enjoy the Jack White stuff, and I'll see you all on the ice, and I bid you adieu. Just it walking right again. Again. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell for those notifications. See you on the ice.